Here we are down in Iowa, working on an Airstream 27 front twin bed globe trotter, and it's going to be an interesting project. I think we're going to try and get, I think it's seven or eight hundred watts on the roof. I think it's depending if we can use the existing panel or not. So let's uh, take a look at what we're doing, what our plan is here. So let's talk about the crew first. We got Coco. And our youngest daughter, Amelia, is doing homeschool this year, so she's out on the road with me for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I got her putting on some Z brackets. Don't worry, I double check them. All right, she needs a little bit of assistance, so this is the first time doing these. Let's see if I can help her out. All right, that didn't take much. You got it? Just got it down. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what's going into this thing? We've got... Uh, 3000 multi plus, Lynx distributor, not the dog, she's staying with me. Uh, two of these SOC or SOK, a uh, little over 206 amp hour batteries. These are the heated options. I believe, I know one of them for sure is heated. And a uh, 50 amp charge controller, the uh, trailer charge controller and we're actually going to repurpose the stock 30 amp charge controller that's in there. Let's take a look inside because that's always where the tricky stuff is. It is pretty. Love these Airstreams. Absolutely love them. Tell you what, one of the things I really like about them is you can tear them apart and put them back together without having to do bad things. So in uh, the previous install we did, we uh, installed everything back here in this compartment. But in this particular Airstream, the underneath the twin beds are just uh, cabinets, not pull-out drawers. So they're not as deep. or These are deeper, which means that compartment is much smaller. And the customer would like to keep that usable. So in this case, we are going to install in this compartment. And to do that we are likely going to have to uh, pull, well, we're going to pull this out, which means we had to unscrew these cabinets, which only took four screws, and they slid back. Same with this, four screws slid back. Didn't even have to take the top off. Uh, taking this apart is going to be tricky, but should be doable. Uh, there's some indoor-outdoor carpet on the back side of it, which I believe is holding some brackets together. We'll get to that here in a bit. But uh, I got to get to work on taking off the electronics on this upper cabinet, and then away we go. And then we can start mounting things to that board. At least that's my plan. And if we do that, we may actually put the batteries right in here as well. That does two things. One, the batteries don't have to use their self-heating function as much. The reason why it's important to try and limit the self-heating function is because when that is being used that is capacity that's being used from the battery that the battery monitor can't track because that happens in the battery. So I try and limit that as much as possible. It's a great feature, love it, but it can throw your state of charge way off, especially in the cold, like it's cold right now actually outside. Uh, so I've been hearing a lot of reports about that from people online, uh, systems going dead, not sure why, they got self-heated batteries. Uh, you're out on the road for a month, you lose, let's say, 2-3% to of your battery capacity every day from the self-heating. It never gets tracked. Eventually you go dead and you don't know why. So the only way to combat that is to charge up to 100%, let's say, every week, one way or another. And true 100%, that means the batteries get to 14.4 or 14.6 volts, uh, respectively, depending on what your battery manufacturer says. But you want to get it all the way up there. Oh, almost forgot. Um... Yeah, and then the, the monitoring we're going to put in here. Hopefully, we're going to be able to mount the screen in here somewhere. Hoping. Because we should be get, a, get access there through the... That's where the main panel is. And here's what I really like. Uh, there's a little chase right here for the ducting, or the heating ducting. Um, I'm hoping, wishing, praying that we can just feed the main AC cables right through there and we're good to go. Look at her, unsupervised, she's getting the job done. 
Yeah, I shouldn't say unsupervised. Coco's on the job. <laughs> we spent the rest of the day planning wire routes, trying various component layouts on the board. Eventually, we retired for the night in our vintage bus conversion, getting good rest to start the next day. Well, here we are on day two. We've been here for three, but this is day two of the install. And let's see where we're at and what we're doing. We got Coco here still keeping us company. Got quite a mess going. Here's uh, what we ended up doing for our board. And uh, we got a little creative, more so than usual, I would say. And we're gonna have to try and land a bunch of things in there, but try and do as much as we can out here, save on the knees and just overall good thinking and good vibes. So this is what I got going on here. We got the, uh, of course, the MultiPlus 3000. And we run these with four odd cable typically. The reason why we do that is they mandate a 400 amp fuse. And I've seen these pull over 300 amps. It can happen. Uh, resistive heaters. Look it up on the power factor ratings. It'll use this plus the surge. It's pretty crazy. So, um, got the Orion smart charger for the trailer. Got the original charge controller that came with the Airstream. We're gonna reuse that. And then we got the uh, 50 amp by 100 for the new panels we're putting up there. Those are all stacked up, ready to go. Um, and these are gonna be for ground deploy. Got the Serbo GX there. Actually, this is the new Serbo S GX, which is a nice way to save a little bit of money. It's about $70 cheaper. You lose uh, some digital ports there, some digital pins. Most people don't use them anyway. And you lose, I think it's a BMS CAN or CAN bus uh, port on the other side. Most smaller systems don't use it. So Victron came out with that to save some people some money. Really appreciate that. So we're using it here. And of course, we got our little uh, custom cable that we've been sending out to a couple of people. People have asked, so we've been selling those. I'm trying to think of anything else that's kind of interesting here. Um, yeah, this should just drop right in there. Let's see uh, what we got going on inside. So here's good news. Got that mounted for once. Something's actually going back together. Then uh, we got the AC lines and HDMI and USB all run through here. To do that, uh, just went all the way underneath here. And here's something I found out. They're a little hard to open. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, love this about the Airstream. Check these out. This is all open underneath here. And so we just snake it through there. And then uh, through here, and there's a little stainless steel uh, cover that'll go over that when, when we're done. Wrap this in conduit, and then uh, run it here. Batteries are gonna be in that corner. I'm building a little platform for that. So the cable angle, I'm actually gonna run underneath the batteries, and then by lifting the batteries up a little bit, that's going to get them off up off the floor and actually give a little bit more room because of the way that curves down. So the further we can get them up, the more horizontal space we have. Then the board's gonna sit right in here and we're gonna basically box this out and uh, similarly to how that is and then we'll probably ventilate through that same ventilation grate there. Pulled out the old inverter that was in there and we're gonna wire those, wire that outlet together to keep the pass-through functionality going. Maybe clean up those wires a little bit and I think we're actually going to use those inverter wires there. I just put some blue caps on them. I think I'm going to use those as the main DC feed lines because those are pretty heavy gauge. And I'll extend those and run those to the, to the board on that empty spot on the links. <sighs> it's quite a mess in here, but uh, customer, if you're watching this, it's going to all go back together. I promise. Coco and I took a break to enjoy some of the freshly fallen snow. Next, we got to work fitting the board 
in the front storage bay and making wiring home runs to the inverter and DC mains. All would not continue to go as smooth, however. During test fitting of our battery compartment, we found out both of the SOK batteries were in trouble. One battery was able to be jump-started and charged normally. The other likely needed a replacement of the BMS board. However, we had a limited time frame to work on this, and the customer felt they could perform the battery swap easily once a replacement from SOK arrives. All right, here we are at the end of the project. Uh, we started on a Tuesday night, and it is now Saturday morning. Getting ready to, we're just packing up our stuff and thought we'd uh, give a quick overview of what we did, how it turned out. So, without further ado, somebody wants to be involved here, I guess. <laughs> got my power supply here, just got done uh, programming the, the trailer charging. This is the way I do it. Put a little uh, power, lab power supply on there, go to pin one and seven. Or, sorry, one and four to program that. But let's take a look at this, how this turned out in here. I think this looks pretty nice. We did the uh, little LED strip up there again, like usual. And uh, we got Victron Multi Plus 3000, the Orion DC DC charger, the stock Airstream solar controller, an upgraded 100 by 50 controller. Link's distributor with the LED cable and the Servo GX over there as well. And all neat and tidy with the three inch cable raceway. I really like that. I think I'm probably gonna be using that from now on all the time. Just way more room for all the cables and it ends up looking nice. Uh, so that's what's going on there. And this compartment where we've done things before Eh, nothing. We have put them in there before, but uh, this is the 27 uh, foot, I almost said inch, 27 foot gold trotter. So the, the layout's just a little bit different, uh, specifically with the depth of these cabinets. Oh, it's a good thing uh, we checked here. I forgot to put this cover on. I gotta do that. But uh, other than that, this is the other area where we have some controls. We thought it'd be easier to get and actually use the shutoffs and the disconnects here rather than the front compartment. So we ran all that stuff here. And we also have some pigtails here for uh, that other controller so customer can put some ground deploy panels out and use that one. So that's what's going on there. I'll make sure to get that taken care of. See, this is why we do this together. By watching this video, you helped uh, quality check this. Okay, uh, like we talked about before. Servo GX screen in there, looking great. Nice and clean. This is how the bedroom turned out. Pretty much like it was before. Uh, but there's a couple of differences here. Uh, so typically there's a panel there you can pull out. What we did was we made a panel here you can pull out. And not only that, you can pull this panel out now, super easy. Before, uh, this entire cabinet is assembled together with a aluminum piece of angle, or yeah, angle aluminum, that joins both of these together. And it's nice, it keeps a nice seam there and all that, but uh, it makes getting in there a real pain. So now, if you want to get in here, uh, it's just a couple screws here, and this pops out. And if you want to pull this entire panel out, it's five screws, I think is what I did. One, two, three, four. And then there's one more, you can't see it, but it's underneath here. Maybe you can see it. You have to trust me, it's in there. And then that whole thing will lift up. And there are some electronics uh, or some cables in there, but there's enough room where you can pull it out and set it aside a little bit. Or I got pretty good at taking this off. It's not that hard. But it'll let you actually get access to that stuff, which is so important. And all the builds we do, I try and think about access. How is this going to work long term? 
I just don't want it to look good now. I want you to be able to work on it and maintain it or someone else, or maybe even myself, future me, All right? So uh, I think you're gonna like what's in here. Give me a minute. So check this out. We got two SOK batteries in here, running in parallel. And got those mounted on a platform underneath here, covered in carpet and got that secured down there with a ratchet strap. And so now the batteries are super accessible. So that's the way that works. And then uh, this panel just goes right back over there. I think it's pretty smart and slick. Tell me what you think. We had a really fun time doing this. Uh, like I said before, we really focused on making it work over here. Uh, that other Airstream we worked on, it was a little bit different because it's a 22 foot, I believe. So we didn't have this space here. This was a little bit different. Uh, one, th one thing that's kind of weird with Airstream is there's this little panel here. That's empty space through here. Here, it's a heating vent, right? Here, it's just empty. So if you want a little more extra storage in your Airstream, uh, look for little compartments like that and you can probably pop that cover off. It's probably just pin nailed in there or something. And uh, you get creative, get yourself some extra space. Uh, so that's the long and the short of that. Um, I'll put that back together off camera, trust me. So let's talk about the solar. Uh, I mean, that's the thing that people don't realize is when they say they want a solar system, really they want a battery, battery and inverter system. And solar is kind of a small part of it. I think uh, this was like maybe a half day of work. Uh, as you saw, Amelia was helping out putting the brackets on. And I double checked them, don't worry. Yeah, it's mostly, it's kind of a fabrication project up there. But up there, we've got 700 watts six 100 watt panels and two 50 watt panels ran in series strings. So we have a 4S 2P configuration into two different, uh, two of the different stock ports up there. And that leads to a maximum amps of about 17.5 because our nominal voltage is somewhere around 40 volts on the PV side. So if you don't understand what that means, Basically, it's a safe way to use the existing wiring and still get optimal charging. And we have a lot of parallel strings, so hopefully this partial shade and all that stuff up there isn't going to be a problem. So we will have to get reports back from the customer on this because at the time, it is February and cold. So for myself, Coco, Amelia, who you saw, and JD down in Arizona, he's doing some great work down there. Hopefully we'll have a video coming from there. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you need any help on anything that you got going on, uh, RV, pizza truck, food truck, dog house, looking at you, girl, anything you want to put batteries, solar on, give us a call. We'd love to help you out. We've uh, People have been doing that. It's been great. Really like, uh, really like doing it. You know, you order stuff on Amazon, and... <laughs> Good luck getting support through there, right? So somebody's making money on it. Why not give it to me and JD and Coco and everybody else who works with us? Thanks. Bye.